In this lesson, it's going to be pretty quick and pretty easy. This is just basically learning how to um, delete objects and undo uh, things that we've made a mistake with. So, in this case, we've got some random lines here. If I select one of those lines and then press the delete key on my keyboard, it's going to uh, remove it from our AutoCAD drawing. To bring back um, that object, we can do uh, undo by typing U at the command prompt, and pressing space or enter, and it'll bring back the line. Uh, another way to delete is by selecting the objects we wanted to get rid of, and pressing E at the command prompt, and pressing space or enter. And again, we've done the same thing, we've deleted those objects, so we'll bring them back again by pressing U and space or enter. Um, another thing too is you don't necessarily need to select the objects to erase them, you can start the erase command first by pressing E and then space or enter. Now it's asking us for the objects we want to select to um, delete. So I've selected those two lines and I can press space or enter and they're deleted again. I'm going to type U for undo, press space or enter and they've come back again. Uh, another interesting thing we can do is we start the erase command again. Now this is, it's asking us to select objects and Many AutoCAD commands will ask you to select objects. <coughs> so what we're about to do next use, works for any command that asks you to select objects is we can type the word all and press space or enter. And as you can see it's selected all the objects. Now if I press space or enter it's, uh, it's going to delete them. Now when you use the all command it will select every single thing in your drawing. Um, so you've got to be careful with that, that you don't accidentally erase everything and save your drawing and close it because you'll be in big trouble. So that's the basics of the erase and delete um, commands and, um, and the undo command. So we'll look at some of those a bit further on in other ways and um, how we can work, work with them. Um, but that's the basics for now. Now, in this lesson, it's going to be another simple lesson where basically we're just going to learn how to select and deselect objects. I know we touched on it on an earlier lesson. Um, so basically I've got a whole bunch of lines and circles. So if I was to, to wait to select an object is I can manually left click on an object if I wanted to. And I can be very specific about what I want to uh, select. Now. If I wanted to deselect an object, if I selected one by mistake, I can hold down my shift key on my keyboard and then I can left click the object I, I want to delete. So that's the basics of selecting and deselecting. Another way to select um, in a quick method, as you can see we were just selecting one object at a time there, if we wanted to select all or part of those objects, we could just left click anywhere on the uh, model space screen and then we move our mouse to the left upper and whatever's within that green um, region that's come up and we left click it's going to select those objects and then again we can still use the deselect command and we may want to get rid of these circles and then we're left with that selection so that's the basics of uh, select and deselect uh, there are other things you can do with that but uh, that's all we probably need to start off with In these next lessons, uh, we're going to look at some practical applications of editing commands that we can use. As you can see here, we just have a simple line. Now, if we were going to draw a wall on our floor plan, such as uh, a brick veneer or cavity wall, what we want to do is give this wall a thickness. So, the way to do that is we can use the offset command. So, to start the offset command, we can type O on our keyboard, press space or enter. And now if we look at the command prompt, it's asking us for a distance. So if we were going to do, say, well in this case we'll say a timber stud wall of 90 millimeters, we could just type 90. And now it's going to ask us for the object that we want to offset. So we'll select our line. And as you can see, if I move my mouse left to right of that line, 
it's asking us which side we want to offset. So I click on uh, the side I want and it's offset the line. And I can keep doing that until I finish the command. Uh, to finish the command we can just press space or enter. I'm just going to delete those extra lines as uh, we just only want that for now. So another way to offset is perhaps we could have well, we may have another line up here. And say we don't know what that distance is between there, but we know we want to offset one of these lines that distance. If we start the offset command again, typing O, space or enter, instead of entering a distance this time, we can pick on the point of that line, and then we can pick to another line or distance that we want to offset. So in this case, that distance. And now it'll ask us to offset which, uh, which line we want to offset. So we can select that line and now it's going to perfectly, no matter what line we pick, it's going to perfectly uh, offset the distance we did from that point to that point. So that's the basics of the offset command. Now what I'm going to do is here is I'm going to draw another wall. This time we're going to use the offset command. We're going to type 90 again press space or enter and offset this wall. Now if we wanted these walls to join up we could do that a number of ways. We could select these objects and uh, we could sort of stretch them up and just sort of stretch these ones to each other. But as you can see that would be you know a bit time consuming, a bit fiddly. Uh, there is a more efficient way to do that and that's using something called the fillet command. So we can type F at the command prompt or fill it and press space or enter and now it's going to ask us what objects we want to select but before we do that something that's important to look at is here is the radius if we type R it's going to ask us for a radius now if we want these lines to be perfectly linear uh, we would just leave that at 0 but if I was to make that say 30 press space or enter and then ask me for the objects to select I press that object and that object you can see that it's it's joined the lines together but it's put this little curve in there of, uh, of 30 uh, 30 degrees radius so what we're going to do is we're going to use the undo command so we're going to use U press spacebar spacebar again uh, just so you know with the undo command you can just keep pressing the spacebar and not keep undoing um, over and over until pretty much the last time you open the drawing. Um, so okay, we're going to do the fillet command again, but without a radius. So we'll type F at the command prompt, press space or enter. As you can see, we've got the radius again. We'll just type R for radius. It's set back to zero. Uh, it's set back to zero because I did the undo command, but had we not done the undo, it would have remembered the last thing we did, which was the 30. But in this case, it's zero, so we can press space or enter. Now we can select our objects. As you can see, it's um, joined those two together and it's a perfectly sharp point there. If I press the space bar again to restart the command, I can now select these two objects. And we've now made a junction in our wall, which is um, what we call the fillet, so the way it's filleted together. And that's uh, something you use a lot of, joining, joining things together that way. Um, another thing we'll look at here is I'll draw some more lines here. Now say we want these lines to uh, intersect with this wall here. Um, we could use the stretch command, uh, which is quite viable in this situation. Um, but in some cases, the stretch command might not be suitable. Um, so for instance, if I did, if this was an angled wall actually, um, and we'll delete these. We could stretch to that, but it's it's only you know it's not going to stretch well. Um, so what we can do is we can use something called the extend command. So to start that, we type E X and at the command prompt. Now it's going to ask us to select the objects that we want to um, extend to. We press space, and then we can select the objects that we want to extend. And as you can see, it's pretty straightforward. Select the object we want to extend to, and then select the objects um, that we want them to extend. We'll try that again. 
and this time perhaps we'll use a we'll extend to a circle. So we'll type ex command prompt. It's going to ask us now for the object that we want to extend to. So we've selected our circle, and we can press space or enter to let that know we've made our selection. And now it's going to ask us for the objects that we want to extend. We can pick them one at a time, like we did, uh, like I just did then, or I just undo that command and we'll do extend again. We can just drag a window around it. So that's another way. Now, another thing to look at there is I'll just copy a few lines over here. Okay. And I'll create another angled line. If I start the extend command, um, <clears throat> we could select all those objects to extend to that line, um, which in this case would be quite fine. So sometimes you can have other lines that you don't want to extend to that line. So sometimes the way to do that, um, particularly if you have lots and lots of lines and it's 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 a uh, you know very hard to see what you're doing. If you look at the um, command prompt, we can use this thing called fence. So we press the F. Uh, key, press space or enter. It's going to ask us for our fence point. So basically what we're doing here is we're drawing an invisible line over these, the ends of these lines that we want to extend. So I picked my first point and now it's asking me for a second point and I'll keep doing that until you know I'm, I'm ready and perhaps I can select that and then I can press the space or enter key and as you can see it's now joined all those lines in, in one go. Um, this is a basic sort of example, so it's not going to show you the full potential of why that's useful. Now, if we were to, say, have another line here, and say that now we've, we've, we've got these lines here that have gone through, but we want to we wanna cut these lines back to this line, what we can do is we can use command called trim. So to start the trim command we type tr, again we select our uh, boundary similar to the extend and we press space or enter to let it know we've selected it. Now it's going to ask us for the lines that we want to um, trim. So we can either left click individually or we can you know drag a window. As you can see that was probably quite a good uh, example of how we could use the fence command. I'll just extend these lines again to these to here. Now I'm going to trim again, TR. I'm going to select this boundary. And this time I'm going to use uh, the fence command. And as you can see, I can now direct exactly where I want to cut over which or which lines I want to cut over. So I can select that press space and enter. Um, it's quite good getting shapes there because as you can see when I create a selection window or region it's uh, rectangular. It doesn't allow me to go into an angled shape like we just did with the uh, fence command. Now they're some of the most important editing commands that you'll use and you'll use them a lot uh, along with the previous uh, lessons we've done. Um, so try give those a go. If you have any questions or comments, um, just leave them below the video in the comment section, and uh, I'll give you a hand. Now this is the last editing command we're going to use um, of this particular um, chapter, and although it's something that we can use quite a lot in many areas, we're going to look at it as a very simple. Um, way this time around before we move on and use it later on in the uh, course. Here I have a polyline. As you can see here I've selected it and it's all joined together. Now you may want to basically turn these into lines, break them apart. Um, there's, there's lots of reasons why you may want to do that with a polyline. Um, we'll get into that later on. But the way to do that is to use a command called explode. So now depending on the way your AutoCAD set up you can either type the X key 
uh, at the command prompt and press space or enter and it will start the explode command. Uh, or if you have another setup of um, AutoCAD, you might just need to type explode, uh, that actually has a word, and it's to start the command. I'll just go back to the X and press space or enter. Now it's asking us to select the objects we want to explode and we selected our polyline and now if I click on it you can see that it's not one big joined object anymore it's now a bunch of separate lines. Um, the explode command as I said can be used on polylines, can be used on a lot of different objects. Um, there's a lot of objects it can't be used on as well. Uh, for instance, exploding a line is not possible. That's the basic sort of form of a of a line. Um, there are things called blocks that we'll look at later, which sometimes you need, need to explode. Um, and also um, hatches. Uh, some hatches you may want to explode too. And again, we'll look at those a little bit later on. But that's the command I thought. Right now, I'll bring it up, and we'll look at it in further detail later on. Thank you.